Do you hear that sound? That's former President Barack Obama sounding the alarm to get Biden reelected. Obama is one of a cadre of Democrats who are getting very nervous surrounding the 2024 elections and are urging those in the president's inner circle to buttress his campaign. Now, as The Washington Post reports, during a private lunch with the president, Obama grew animated in discussing the 2024 election and former President Donald Trump's potential return to power and has suggested to Biden's advisors that the campaign needs more top-level decision makers at its headquarters in Wilmington, or it must empower the people already in place. If polling data is to be believed, Obama is very right to be worried. Recent polling indicates that Trump has a substantial lead over Biden with independence at 55 percent versus Biden's 45 percent, and his grip over the GOP is stronger than Biden's over the Democrats. 97 percent of Republicans back Trump, while just 84 percent of Democrats back Biden. Bad news gets worse when looking at polling data for groups where Democrats usually dominate Republicans. Trump leads Biden 57 to 43 with Hispanics. And among young voters aged 18 to 29, Trump leads 58 to 42, a bad sign for a president seeking re-election. Biden's poor polling numbers come on the heels of a catastrophic ca conference call to plan strategy between the White House and Democratic cheerleaders last week. Axios reports that pundits walked away from the call shaken that Biden world is not adequately taking the possibility of a Trump victory seriously. Democrats were not particularly encouraged by Biden's visit to Valley Forge last week, where Biden released a video tying modern politics to the events of the revolution. Let's watch. We're in Valley Forge. and I'm standing in a home that George Washington rented at the time. He was here for about six months. Think about this. Ordinary men and women decided they weren't going to bow down to kings anymore. And so what did they do? They came out and they took on the strongest military in the world. Ordinary people, ordinary people, demanding liberty, demanding freedom, demanding to be able to run their own lives. That's who we are. That's who an American is, and we're still that American today. We're still that American today. We bow to no one. Hmm. Robbie, who is that for? Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's supposed to be for me, for libertarians, I guess, but it, we're not going to believe it coming out of the mouths of Joe Biden, the man who famously required millions of people to get um, the vaccine and all sorts of other COVID measures and all sorts of other. I mean, he's not a he, he's not the candidate of people who value individual liberty, in my view. I mean, frankly, there is no candidate for us, sadly. Um, I was refreshing myself, uh, refreshing my memory, uh, refreshing myself, refreshing my memory of what the polls looked like uh, back in 2020 mm -hmm. when uh, for Trump versus Biden. And it is, it's true that for almost the entire 2020 race, Biden was ahead of Trump. Um, the final result was, frankly, a little closer than the polls suggested. Biden led Trump pretty substantially on na national polls. And then in the swing states, he, he maintained a good lead the whole way through. It always looked like that. Um, that was one of the reasons the kind of, oh, the election was stolen from me kind of narrative the, the Trump people came up with actually didn't, didn't, you didn't need something um, out of the ordinary to explain what happened because the polls were were pretty accurate. In, in fact, the, the 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 end result was more favorable to Trump than the polls would have suggested. So that's a long way of saying that if you look at these polls now, you should be very very worried. Trump yeah. is way ahead, way ahead. And yeah. if he, if he does if he overperforms the polls to the degree he did last, it's going to be a landslide in his favor. Yeah, and I know people are looking at the independent numbers, and those are concerning. Strength with independence is one of the most strong predictors of your ultimate outcome. And it was one of, sorry to be a grudge bearer here, but I'm having all these flashbacks of 2020. It was one of the reasons that people were making an electability argument for Bernie Sanders, who what did, mm -hmm. did best with that group. But I think the real canary in the coal mine here is how extraordinarily poorly Biden is doing with young voters. I mean, young voters for decades, perhaps since time immemorial, have been so solidly aligned with the Democratic Party. And to not just to lose support among young voters, but to have Donald Trump, of all people, outstrip your support with young voters, I think that's really strong evidence of young voters not necessarily saying, I'm going to go and vote for Donald Trump, but saying that because of their values, they find voting for, for uh, Joe Biden unconscionable, that there's a line in the sand that has been you know, it was it was sketched in by the betrayals over student debt cancellation. It was sketched in by, um, you know, Gen Z and millennials coming up 
as the first generation to not perform as well economically as their parents, not being able to afford homes, having to deal with these incredible interest rates and the, and the like. But it was gouged indelibly in the ground um, after October 7th. And Joe Biden, it's unconditional support of the siege in Gaza, which has now killed over 22,000 people. And while Republicans and Democrats alike to, can see the solution to that problem as uh, ban TikTok, let's have more authoritarianism, let's shut down speech because kids are seeing too many horrible images of bodies torn asunder and kids, uh, babies having their limbs amputated. That's not the problem. The fundamental problem is that overwhelming majorities of Americans, over 66% of Americans, support at the bare minimum just a ceasefire. And Joe Biden and his administration apparently think that they can ignore the popular will and push themselves over the finish line by, I don't know, pure will, guilt, executive fiat, uh, a lack of democracy, stripping other primary candidates from the ballot. Who knows what's on their mind, but it's a really, really tough gamble they're making. Yeah. Biden certainly does not look like the most electable candidate, to go back to the electability argument. Yeah. Um, he looks uh, uniquely vulnerable. In, in fact, some polls, it started to reverse. We, we always used to say, well, say what you will about Biden, but he remains more popular than many other Democrats, including then his vice president, Kamala Harris. Even that got flipped yeah. recently. Kamala Harris, a, a famously <laughs> not particularly Compelling, well, attractive, des desirable, you're saying politically, not my, of course, yeah, right, I mean, not right. physically. Or, or not, not someone who has this deep reservoir of, of support, this right. base. Not, not someone tapped into what the people yeah. are looking for. Even yeah. she doing better than uh, than. Uh, than Biden. So the fact remains, why aren't they even having a sort of contest where you could audition other candidates and see if they catch fire, see if see if someone um, uh, does well in a debate against Biden yes. or or overperforms in a in a primary vote, something like that. Let let's again, democracy is at stake, but we can't have actual democracy to decide whether Joe Biden should be the leader of the Democratic Party, the party with yes. democracy in its name. And I've said this before, but I really want to underscore this point. Primaries and debates in particular are not just opportunities for challengers to make themselves known to the general public. They're opportunities for incumbents to remind the party as a whole what it has accomplished and what its prospective agenda is. Without having a Democratic part primary, while the Republicans, despite Trump's non-participation, are having a Republican primary, you're getting New cycle after new cycle of Republicans putting forth their vision for the country. Now, as unappetizing as it might be to me, there is a vision that's being articulated. Whereas Joe Biden and the Democrats, what is their data? How do they think America for the next mm -hmm. four years should differ from America in, in the last in the last four? Joe Biden's putting out videos of him going to visit a place that George Washington stayed for six months, and this is supposed to be some grand analogy for democracy. People want to know if they can afford their mortgages. People want to know if they can afford to buy a car. People want to know if they can afford health care. People want to know if they can afford to send their kid to college or to vocational school or get an education that can set themselves up in a tough work environment for the rest of their life. That's, those are the kind of questions that could conceivably be answered if Biden were meaningfully challenged by someone on a debate stage, or even if the mainstream media would allow a debate between Dean Phillips, Marion Williamson, Jank Uger, and anybody else who might want to throw their hat into the ring. But Democrats are really shooting themselves in the foot, believing that not Trump mm -hmm. is really going to carry uh, Joe Biden across the finish well, line. Well, and the Biden team is clearly very upset. They're combative about this, that the press does not tout Biden's accomplishments enough, that we're, that, you know, members of the media, I guess, like us, aren't out there trying to tell everyone everything's so great. And, and That's his job. What Biden did for me. <laughs> right, exactly. But they're unwilling to make that case yes. in the format yes. that one would traditionally do so during a campaign season, yes. on the campaign trail, e including within the Democratic primary. Um, you know, he thinks, I mean, that we've heard from their attitude. We've heard from people like Simone Sanders who yes. say, well, he's the incumbent, so he's entitled to it. So he'll, you know, he'll uh, dust himself off and get onto that debate stage when uh, when Donald Trump or whoever it is is, uh, is christened, and they'll just move straight into the general election. But the poll numbers are not suggesting that's a great strategy. We're going to have, in all likelihood, a general election debate with two candidates who we literally have never heard from yeah. on a debate stage for the last year. Yeah. Incredible stuff. We're just going to be hearing um, comments about how magnets work. <laughs>
from Trump in the meantime, <laughs> which I'm here for. That's great. All right, we're rising for you right after this. Stick around. <laughs>